Hi, my name is Hubwood and welcome to today's video in which we will take a closer look at the performance of the brand new Intel integrated graphic chip, the Iris XE G7 96EUs, which is included in the new Intel i7 1165G7 and the Intel i7 1185G7 CPUs. I will provide some information about the chip, Intel and the laptop that I used at the end of the video after the gaming benchmarks if you are interested. Please be aware that the performance of such an integrated graphics unit highly depends on the laptop. So you could have the same chip but get quite a bit better performance out of it. Or maybe significantly less if your laptop can provide enough energy to power the chip. And it's very important to keep in mind that the Intel drivers aren't very good as of today. So driver optimization could further improve the performance. And to be honest, I really hope it will. By the way, all benchmarks and videos were recorded with an Elgato capture card to make sure there is no FPS loss when recording. Yes, I finally obtained one of these. Oh, and I wasn't able to test Call of Duty Warzone, as it would always crash within seconds no matter which resolution and settings I was using. The same also applied to Metro Exodus. So unfortunately, I had to skip on those two tests. If you like this content, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more laptop and entry-level GPU reviews. The first game for today will be Red Dead Redemption 2. At 720p and a mix of low and some medium settings, I was achieving a very respectable 36.5 FPS and the game doesn't look that bad. At least I wouldn't recommend using the very low settings, as you can see there is still some headroom for tinkering around with the settings a bit but I would say very playable for an integrated GPU and as you can see thanks to the i7 and 60GB of RAM the frame time seem to be pretty stable as well, nice. I also made an extended video about Red Dead Redemption 2's performance on the Iris XE and I will link it to the description. The second game for today will be Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which unfortunately not only delivered disappointing 28 FPS on average on the lowest settings in 720p with a 1% low of 18, but it also had some severe graphical glitches as you can see here. I mean the game is playable FPS wise if you're not the type that needs 60 FPS, but I really hope some driver updates can fix that. The next title I tested was Fortnite and I would absolutely recommend playing it at 720p as well with low settings and epic view distance as only that way you will achieve an average of over 60 FPS which is actually the minimum I would recommend for a game like that. On 900p it was only 52 FPS on average and on 1080p only 45 FPS on average. So my advice would be stick to 720p or 900p if you have to. I also made an extended video about Fortnite on the Iris XE and I will link it to the description. Next up was Rocket League and on 900p and lowest settings I was achieving an average of 57 FPS with a 1% low of 32 FPS which I would consider playable. On 720p I was getting around 66 FPS with a 1% of 37 though. I've also made an extended video about Rocket League and I will link it to the description as well. PUBG performed ok with an average frame rate of 49 and a 1% low of 30 at 720p with lowest settings. I would not recommend playing the game at a higher resolution on this GPU. Please check out my extended Iris XE clip for this game as well if you would like to see more footage and the performance in other resolutions. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider I was achieving around 34 FPS on average on very low settings at 720p with a 1% low of only around 19. The game runs better in some areas and worse in others, so it's hard to define an accurate average FPS. But I would consider it playable, similar to Assassin's Creed Odyssey I guess. For The Division 1 I was only running the integrated benchmark tool which resulted in an average of 26 FPS at 1080p and medium settings, so you would absolutely get more playable frame rates at 900p, but it was clearly one of the better performing titles. In Kingdom Come Deliverance I saw an average of 43 FPS and a 1% low of 22 at 720p with lower settings. 
With some adjusting you could surely achieve better optics if you're okay with something around 30 fps. The game's very natural landscape still looks kinda nice even on those lowest settings in my opinion. I have to mention that the frame times seem to be all over the place sometimes and the game doesn't feel as fluid as it should. Again, I hope for some driver fixes someday. I was achieving very playable 48 FPS on average for Forza Horizon 4, but there was an issue with the headlights in night scenes as you can see here, which despite the OK FPS makes it basically unplayable again. I hope that will be fixed in a driver update very soon, so if someone from Intel sees this, please take a note. GTA 5 performed OK with an average of around 41 FPS on 1080p with a mix of medium and high settings and a 1% low of 27. On 900p those settings would get me 47 FPS on average and on 720p very fluid 59 FPS with some nice stable frame times on all resolutions. Please check out my very extended Iris XE clip for this game as well if you would like to see more footage and the performance in the different resolutions. The Witcher 3 was a bit disappointing because I was hoping for 30 FPS on 1080p with medium settings, but I had to choose 900p with medium settings to achieve an average of 34 FPS with a 1% low of 16 FPS. Once more the frame times seem to be all over the place unfortunately, making the gameplay a bit juddery sometimes. For The Division 2 I was again only running the integrated benchmark. At 720p in low settings it achieved an average of 45 FPS and at 1080p in low settings an average of 32 FPS. Far Cry 5 achieved around 38 FPS on average with a 1% low of 22 at 720p in low settings. But it actually still looks ok and it feels pretty direct and fluid for a first person shooter with only 38 FPS. At 1080p and low settings the benchmark run only achieved an average of 22 FPS. The World of Tanks integrated benchmark run scored around 50 to 60 FPS on 1080p and medium settings. On 1080p and super low settings though I saw the highest FPS with all games tested with around 200 to 300 FPS depending on each scene. But to be fair the game really looks terribly outdated on super low settings. Overwatch ran ok with an average of 69 FPS and an average 1% low of 47 on 900p with low settings. Please check out my extended Iris XE clip for this game as well if you would like to see more footage and the performance in other resolutions. The free to play team shooter Valorant by Riot Games scored a respectable 106 FPS average and a 1% low of 45 on 1080p with medium graphics. But then again this game is supposed to run on the toaster they say. Please once more check out my extended Iris XE clip for this game as well if you would like to see more footage and the performance in the other resolutions. CSGO doesn't allow the MSI Afterburner OSD anymore so I had to rely on the integrated FPS meter which would let me guess an average FPS of maybe 110 on 900p with the lowest settings. Again I made an extended clip if you are interested. Resident Evil 2 looks pretty alright on 720p even with low settings and it delivered a playable 44 FPS on average with a 1% low of 18. But as you can see here there are some issues with the consistency of the performance here and there and the frame times go nuts from time to time with heavier FPS drops. Of course League of Legends ran really well with a high average of 80 FPS 88 FPS on ultra settings at 1080p. But then again that was something I expected. The pretty nice looking third person shooter control was playable with an average of 34 FPS on the low settings and 720p. In my opinion this game looks pretty good on lower resolutions even without a GPU that supports DLSS. The phenomenal art design is still able to deliver a great atmosphere and the frame times allowed for a smooth gameplay. Apex Legends delivered a very playable average of around 60 FPS on low settings and 720p. Fluid and playable. I was even able to kill an enemy. But please don't tell anyone that he or she seemed to be AFK, thank you. Ok, let's move on. 
Ah, P.S. There is an extended clip available for this title as well. Check the description if you're interested. If I had to choose, I would use 720p and the lowest settings to play Battlefield 5 on this laptop, because only this combo seemed to allow for a fluid gameplay worthy of a first-person multiplayer shooter with an average of 46 FPS and a 1% low of 27 FPS, but I would still say there is some room for optimization. Check the extended clip for more footage. The new free-to-play title Genshin Impact ran pretty well on 1080p and low settings, still looking like a beautiful Studio Ghibli movie and providing 34 FPS on average with a 1% low of 21. Feeling playable well enough for a third-person Zelda-like action RPG. My extended clip features some more footages and resolutions. Planet Coaster is kinda hard to benchmark because the FPS depends a lot on the CPU and the size of the park you're in. So I won't show any average FPS but just some gameplay on 900p with medium settings in a small park and then in a really big park I've built a few years ago. Feel free to check them out in one of my earliest YouTube videos ever. Diablo 3 ran very well with an average of 81 FPS on a mix of medium and high settings with a high 1% low of 45 FPS at 1080p. Absolutely nothing to complain about here, you can just perfectly play that game on this laptop. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order looks pretty decent even at 720p with lowest settings, achieving an average of around 43 FPS and a 1% low of 15. Thanks to the i7 CPU it feels fluid and it doesn't stutter a lot and I would consider this playable in a pretty okay kind of way. I was kinda surprised how good it still looks and feels at those settings. Doom didn't run as good as expected to be honest, maybe due to driver issues. I was achieving an average of 67 FPS on 720p with a 1% low of 35 FPS at the lowest settings in Vulcan and also in OpenGL. NO1800 was delivering an average of 30 FPS with a 1% low of 19 on 720p with medium settings. Which is fine for a strategy game like this in my opinion and you could of course also use 900p with low settings for a similar result. Oh and I couldn't resist to test Crisis once more. Well it achieved an average of 35 FPS with a 1% low of 18 on yeah, 1080p with medium settings. What else can we say about a game from 2006 that is optimized that badly, obviously. But I would say yes, it can run Crisis. FIFA 2020 ran absolutely fine with 53 FPS on average at 1080p and medium settings. I was experiencing some graphic glitches here and there though. I hope that would get fixed soon. I guess it should be similar for FIFA 2021. Perfectly playable, so let's move on. Testing Subnautica as the last game for today reminded me of that weird but awesome exploration feeling I had when playing that game. At 720p and high settings it achieved an average of 34 FPS with a 1% low of 20 FPS. Now let's talk about the laptop. All games were tested with a brand new Asus VivoBook S15 with 16GB of RAM, DDR4, uh, being 3200 MHz RAM and a 500GB NVMe PCIe SSD which allowed for very fast loading times. And this is a pretty flat and compact 15-inch notebook. The performance of the new Intel Iris Xe graphics processor heavily relies on what the manufacturer is providing for the specific laptop. In my case the CPU seemed to be powered with a constant 28W according to the app Hardware Info and 13 watt for the GPU according to GPU Z. Other laptops could offer slower or better performance depending on wattage, power delivery and thermal solutions. I will make a detailed review about this laptop pretty soon if you're interested, so make sure to check that one out as well. Oh and a fun fact, this integrated GPU actually is the fastest available GPU that Intel has yet built, like ever. But as you might have heard, they plan to provide standalone GPUs for desktop PC sometime soon, but I hope they will heavily work on their drivers until then. And by the way, as this video was made, they also announced their first dedicated laptop GPU, 
the Intel Iris Xe Max, which will ship in a few days as well. This should be a bit faster than the iGPU we've tested today, and I will see to get my hands on one of these as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe, my friends. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye and cheers.